Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to another Angular Tour of Heroes tutorial. This video, we're going to be taking a turn from the path that the tutorial was taking us before. So if we go to Angular's website and we look at the tutorial, we are on actually part six of this tutorial, which is the last step. And that is enabling HTTP services and getting our data from an API. But wait, uh, just like before, it's a fake API an in-memory web API is what they call. So I'm gonna do something a little bit different. It is going to be local, but it is actually going to be a separate program, I guess, or a separate instance of a website, which is just gonna be functioning as an API. And we're gonna use Python Flask. I thought this would be more beneficial, at least in my mind, for us to do it this way and get our data from what is more a real API than something that's in memory. So we're going to, in this video, use Python to create this quick little web API. And it's gonna be quick and dirty, but I think, like I said, it'll be more beneficial. And if you like this kind of stuff, don't forget to hit subscribe. We're really getting close to 750 already. And I said my ultimate goal right now is 1,000 subscribers. So if you like this kind of stuff, uh, feel free to subscribe. And if you want to follow along since the beginning, I have a playlist created that you can go through and follow step by step. Just to recap, here is our application. Here is our heroes. We fetch the heroes right now, which is from, let me pull it up, this mock heroes TypeScript file. And it just serves up all of these heroes that are just hard coded values. Really, we're going to put them in their own web API in Python and serve them up from an API call the real way. So, and we're also gonna talk about cores and what happens when uh, we don't do something specific in Flask. And we'll get to that when the time comes, but I'm gonna open a new instance of Visual Studio Code here. And I'm gonna keep the current one running with the Angular project. I'm just gonna open a new file. By the way, everything I put in this uh, demo will be in this GitHub repository that I made specifically for this. I'll have this link down below. So if you don't care about making any of this, you just want to copy and paste it and run it. Um, you can totally do that. You just have to pip install Flask, by the way, and Flask cores, but you don't have to type all this out. You can just copy it. But I, I think it'll be um, more fun for you to follow along, but to each their own. So I'm going to open up a new file here and I called it tour of heroes.py for Python. And yeah, we got this nice little uh, message down here. Let's go ahead. And the first thing I want to do is bring up the terminal and we need to install Flask. I don't remember if I already have Flask on this, but uh, we're going to find out. Okay, I guess I didn't have Flask. So maybe it's a good thing that I did that. And the first thing we want to do is from Flask import JSONify, so that allows us to turn a dictionary that we're going to use into JSON, so it can send it with the API response. And we're also going to do request, but I don't think we actually end up using this, but I'll, I'll do it anyway, at least for now. We might in the future. And then we're just going to import Flask itself, or maybe, maybe I should pour Flask with the capital F. We'll get rid of this line right here. Okay. So this will be a little bit different than my GitHub repo, but it, it'll all be the same. Just this difference right here. Okay, and I zoomed in a bit, hopefully that helps. And let's create our app, which is going to be Flask, and then name, this this name, yeah. And then let's set our app to be in debug mode. So whenever we make a change uh, and save, it'll refresh the app for us, which is nice. So we'll set that equal to true. And then here's where we're going to create our dictionary with all of our heroes, which is very similar to this right here and that we made in TypeScript. So I'm just going to actually copy this part from the uh, GitHub because it does me no good or you any good. Just watch me type all these out. So this is just a list of dictionary objects and just like in TypeScript that has the ID and the name and then the heroes that we had originally. 
And then here's where we can create our route. So we do the at sign app dot route. And then whatever path we're going to give it in our case, it's going to be slash heroes. And then we can say what kind of methods are allowed with this path. And in our case, it's just going to be get. Okay, and let's just define uh, what's going to happen when a user goes to slash heroes. And we're just going to use that uh, JSONify that I talked about. So we're going to return JSONify of all heroes. So we're going to turn all heroes into a JSON object. And then uh, we should be good. At the very end, we just need to app.run. And let's see if this works. So I'll have to CD to this. And then let's do pi dwarf heroes dot pi. Cool. And it spun up our local host. And let's just click on this to see what we get. And we don't have a default path, just a slash. We only have slash heroes. So if we go there, here we go with the JSON response of those heroes. Okay, so we're back in our Angular project in the app module TypeScript file, and we need to do something to be able to use this HTTP client module in our application, and that is put it or import it into our project into this app module. So let's copy this line. You can get it from part six here, or you can just type it out yourself. We're going to, at the top, import this module. And then we're going to add it to our imports array down here. So HTTP client module. Okay, we'll save that. And then let's go to our hero service TypeScript file. And let's pass in another uh, variable into our constructor. And let's call it HTTP client, I guess. And it's going to be of type HTTP client. Okay, and now we, I just want to work on this get heroes. Maybe in the next video we're talking about how to pass in a parameter when we make the API call. But let's just start by just getting all of the heroes. And we're not going to use this of heroes anymore, these hard-coded values. Rather, we're going to call the API and use the response with the heroes and use those. So instead of of heroes, let's just say, let's just say HTTP client dot get and what kind of type are we expecting to be returned? And the type is going to be a, an array of heroes, right? And then we're just going to pass in the URL. And our URL in this case is just going to be this. Localhost port 5000 slash heroes. So I'll paste this in here. This 127.0.0.1 port 5000 slash heroes. And let's see if it grabs the heroes or if we get some kind of error. So I'm bringing this back over. We'll look and you can see there's no, you know, we saw four buttons of heroes here at the top. Those aren't there anymore. And let's go to the heroes view. I guess that was the heroes view. So the dashboard doesn't have it and the heroes list doesn't list out all of those heroes. And if we open up F12, you can see access from origin has been blocked by the course policy. No access control allow origin headers present on the requested resource. So cores allows a server to indicate any origin other than its own that resources can be sent to. And they have a good example. Domain A right here is different from domain B. Um, so you'll have to plan accordingly for it to be able to send data from domain A to domain B or vice versa, I guess. So let's go back to our Python. And something else I'm going to import. And let me just kill this. So let's import pip install flask underscore cores. And we're going to use this to get rid of that error, basically allow it to uh, send data from this location or this application to our Angular application. So at the top here, we're going to say from flask underscore cores import cores with all uppercase, just like that. And then under where we set debug equal to true, let's just do cores and then pass in our application. We'll save that, rerun this. So it's running and let's go back 
and refresh our application. And here we go, we now have all of the data. We don't have that error anymore. Okay, so that works, but now if I click on a hero and I get the detail, uh, it looks like it works, and that's because it's going back to those hard-coded values in the hero service, so it's using this, where it's just using the hard code and looking for it. Um, I wanna add to our Python API to allow this kind of action to be handled, or this kind of request to be handled, and we'll use the API that way now. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Hopefully, you know, you found this fun and uh, helpful. And I hope to see you in the next one when we add this request to our Python API.